think we need someone new with they're keeping up with the young people and not all old views, I guess. What are LSU students looking for in a new presidential candidate? Find out who students are keeping their eye on. Learn how students feel towards Facebook having a dislike button. And Tiger TV reporter Megan Morvant learns what the state is doing for transgender individuals after the Alex Glover scandal. Good evening, Tigers, and welcome to Newsbeat. I'm Mitch Rabelais. And I'm Laura Savonacquisti. Thanks for joining us. Right now, the second GOP debate is going on. It's a preliminary round with the second tier of Republican candidates. Tiger TV's Courtney Allen is live in the Holiday Forum. Courtney, what's going on down there tonight? Well, Mitch, I'm here in the Holiday Forum where the Society of Politics, Communication, and Law is hosting a debate watch. Starting right now is a meet and greet with free pizza. As you can see, the seats are a little empty, but by the time the main event starts at 6.30, things will be in full swing. Students will get to hear professional commentary both during and after the debate. Politics have been a hot topic on LSU's campus, so we looked to see what students had to say about the potential GOP candidates. Donald Trump, he's kind of a businessman, so I think he'd do well for our economy because he'd run the country like a business. really like Ted Cruz. He's very conservative and I identify with his beliefs, um, whether it's political or not. I'm a Christian as well. So I really like um, all of his policies and, and what he stands for. Well, I really like uh, Donald Trump just because uh, I feel like he's really open-minded. He's not afraid to say what he thinks. I think that's what this country needs. Thanks, Courtney. You can follow the conversation on Twitter with the hashtag SPCLDebate. Almost a week ago, OMB turned away Alex Glover during an attempt to replace an ID. Tiger TV reporter Megan Morvan is here in the studio with us with more. Well, Alex Glover is a transgender woman that caused some question when she was denied her driver's license based on her appearance. Even though she has received her license, some LSU students are concerned about the future for transgenders. I'm just like, we can't hold hands because I'm afraid that we will end up attacked. Luthius Buchanan and Zachary Brady are a transgender couple, and like many others, they worry about being accepted by society. But recently, they fear that one of them will have an experience like Alexandra Glover. Definitely, definitely I'm worried that something like that will happen to me quite worried because it's probably going to be an issue soon um, because I'm finally getting a, an ID for Louisiana. Alex Glover is a transgender woman who was denied her driver's license because she did not look like a man. I'm just going to be upfront. I am transgender and I never had this problem before. Okay. They will not let me take my ID picture unless I take my makeup off. Right. Which this video of Glover's ID encounter went viral, causing some turmoil. But the Office of Motor Vehicles announced that they will not change the policy for ID photographs. Instead, OMV supervisor, Colonel Mike Edmondson, says they will train their employees to know the difference between someone who is misrepresenting themselves and someone who is transgender. Some students believe this training could be helpful. That way, you know, just because you may not understand or you may not even agree doesn't mean that you can't be educated and doesn't mean that you shouldn't know. As long as people are aware that being trans is completely different than misrepresenting yourself, then that solves that particular issue for the most part. While the policy is not changing, people like Alex Glover will be allowed to take their ID picture in a way that represents their daily appearance. We contacted the OMV for a statement, and Colonel Edmondson provided us with this comment. The only reason an OMV clerk would not take a patron's picture is if he or she is wearing a hat, sunglasses, or a mask, for instance. The policy is in place to prevent driver's license fraud. Facebook will add a dislike button to pages starting in the near future. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg announced yesterday that the company was working on developing a new button where you can dislike statuses posted to the site. The site has come after requests from users for years for the button to be added. 
I really don't see a point in it. I mean, if you choose to not like something, that's about as strong as like saying you dislike it. And people could say that that's like a lot of negativity coming from Facebook, giving people that opportunity. So I'm not a big fan of it. Kind of always wanted it, but now that it's actually coming, I feel like it's kind of mean, but I'm kind of excited. I've been wanting it for a while. President Obama is supporting a 14-year-old boy who was arrested after bringing a homemade clock to class. Ahmed Mohammed was arrested after his clock went off in class. A teacher saw the clock going off and thought it was a bomb. Not too long after, police showed up and arrested Mohammed and took him to a juvenile detention center. Mohammed has gained supporters throughout the country. President Obama even tweeted earlier today, Cool clock, Ahmed. Want to bring it to the White House? We should inspire more kids like you to like science. It makes what makes America great. Every week outside of the Union and Free Speech Alley, LSU Dining is providing passersby with the opportunity to purchase fresh fruits and vegetables alike. You can also catch a live demonstration of an LSU Dining chef showcasing his talents and passing out various recipes for you to try for yourself at home. With tons of various options to choose from and recipes to try, expand your horizons and put down your ramen. Come by the Farmer's Market every Wednesday and check out the newest additions. It's very cool to see lots of local fresh fruits and vegetables here on campus. I might have to go there next week. I definitely could go for some fresh oranges right about now. After the break, I'll tell you what the Catholic Church is doing for women. And we'll tell you if Common Core is staying or leaving Louisiana. We'll be right back. Pope Francis has shaken things up multiple times during his first few years since his election. And he did it again when he announced a year of mercy that would begin in December. I look a little deeper to see what this would mean for the Catholic Church. Tuesday, September 1st, Pope Francis announced that from December 2015 to November of 2016, all Catholics will partake in what he calls the Year of Mercy. During this special year, all Catholic women who had an abortion can be forgiven by Catholic priests, according to Father Matthew Graham of the Christ the King Church at LSU. The Church recognizes that sometimes people are pressured into an abortion, and in those cases, the sin does not lay on them, but on the person that promoted it. Even though this might be a grave sin, the Lord can forgive you. The Lord does forgive you. And we want you to feel that now rather than later. The power to forgive a sin that Catholics view as seriously as abortion is usually reserved for bishops only. This year gives women of the church more of an opportunity to become part of the church once more. Normally jubilee years only happen every 25 years. And so this is technically 10 years early. But it just shows that the Pope really thinks that this is something that we need to, we need to address now. Now the Catholic Church within the United States will welcome the Pope as he makes his first trip to America. To see you know, one to two million people coming around at different spots to worship together, to pray together, and to see how unique this church is, but also how universal this church is. The arrival of the Pope and the coming of this year of mercy has made the Catholic Church even more hopeful for the future. So hopefully after this year, people feel more connected with the church. We as a church feel that we are more open, expressing God's love, and God's mercy and hoping to walk with people in their daily journey and hopefully in a new way that they haven't been before. Pope Francis has also changed the style of the papacy. His gesture is looking more like the Old Testament. The Pope has been seen washing the feet of a group of young offenders, including a Muslim woman. Today a federal judge here in Baton Rouge ruled against Governor Bobby Jindal's attempt to block Common Core. The judge said Common Core is not a curriculum and does not interfere with the state's right to handle education. Governor Jindal argued that the financial incentives went too far and violated the Tenth Amendment. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Faircloth, the attorney who filed suit on the governor's behalf, said they plan to appeal. Stay tuned. Mm. We were floating it. Stay tuned. After the break, I'll give you my Woman Crush Wednesday for this week. Oh, goodness. Here we go again. This week is a good one, I promise. And after Mitch enlightens you on his new crush, I'll tell you how a Pope is using jokes to give back. Just please don't start saying your jokes. Mitch, what are you talking about? I'm funny. Oh, great. You've been waiting for it all week. It's Woman Crush Wednesday. And I know you've been waiting to find out who my crush is this week, and it's Manship's one and only, Miss Cindy Carter. If you don't know, Miss Cindy is our advisor here at Tiger TV. She is truly an apple to my eye, and if it weren't for her, I definitely wouldn't be here right now. Miss Cindy is a pro at everything she does, and I hope to one day follow in her footsteps as a great reporter and an even better person. 